Hello. First of all, let me start off by saying thank you to Dr. Sylvia for being the visionary of this call to inspire 2022 empowerment tour. Thank you for allowing God to use you to inspire, to uplift, to motivate, to empower nations through your platform. I honor you. I am Ina Johnson Myers, a 24 year retired Army combat veteran and the CEO of When She Rise LLC. I'm also an international speaker, certified life coach, and author of Girl, Don't Play, Pray, The Professional Women's Guide to Identifying His Brokenness. My company specializes in narcissistic abuse awareness, recovery, and victim prevention. I advocate for women to help them understand the difference between healthy and narcissistic love and relationships. Although severe narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder affects both men and women, I advocate for women due to my own experiences throughout my military career and beyond. I understand that women who suffer the insidiousness of this type of mental, emotional, financial, and sometimes physical abuse are doing it while they're raising children. Broken and abused women raise broken and or abused children who are more than likely to look for relationships that are abusive when they grow older or be abusive when they grow older. Repeating that generational cycle because that's what normal looks like to them. In 2017, psychologists are reporting or were reporting that over 158 million people in the US alone and over 450 million people worldwide were affected by narcissistic abuse. And they also reported that that number is a low number because they can't account for the generations above the parents and the grandparents, nor the generations below the children and the grandchildren. That number is a cross the board number. The insidiousness and the destructiveness of this type of abuse started becoming a noteworthy pandemic before COVID-19 was a pandemic. As I said, they started writing about this in 2017. COVID-19 didn't hit until 2020. And due to the confinement of the COVID pandemic, the abusers and the victims had to stay in close proximity for months, not giving the victims any space to hide behind work or any other activities that separates the two and gives the victim space to justify that bad behavior. Many victims were no longer able to rationalize the abuse anymore. It's painful to accept that your public dream life, marriage relationship is actually a private, horrific nightmare. And often, those nightmares are controlled by money so that they use that to keep the victims in bondage and in fear. We all witness a rise of hospital visits and 911 calls from victims during this pandemic. We saw the rise in healthcare professionals speaking out about the importance of mental health in a way that we have never seen them speak out before. Actually, Mental health became a month rather than just a week. Many times the victims of the abusers would seek help or seek counseling and therapy, but far too often, instead of the abusers themselves seeking help, they would just move on to a new victim. Because women birth generations, it's imperative. We do the work to heal and protect the generations to come. As a combat veteran deployed to places like Bosnia, where I live and drove from base camp to base camp in a country that was riddled with more than 4 million land and anti-tank mines, purposely placed to kill people. Basically, I was playing Russian roulette with my life as I completed my mission for eight months. 
I know a lot about fear. As a single mother, working to working three jobs to feed my family and make ends meet. When I returned home from Bosnia, I knew that my mental health had greatly been affected by my deployment. But being told that if I sought help, it would or it could affect my security clearance, which is my money. I made the conscious choice not to seek help. So I raised my children in anger and untreated PTSD. I know a lot about fear. I was raised by two World War II parents who were big on service. Service for family, seven girls, for church, for community. So as I became an adult, I got involved in toxic relationships because I thought love was being the helping hand bridge for someone's broken or loveless childhood, showing them the possibilities of what life could be or what love could be. Not understanding that you cannot necessarily change a person who's rooted in toxicity and dysfunction. But that toxic and dysfunctional person will most definitely change you. I know a lot about fear. Fear is a feeling millions upon millions of women face every single day in every country, whether it's from intimate partner abuse, trying to make ends meet, workplace insecurities, body image insecurities, too fat, too skinny, too tall, too short, too whatever, whatever. Imposter syndrome. Am I good enough for this? Do I really know how to do this? Am I smart enough? God says you are. Self-worth. Or a million other reasons why women have to feel fear every day. Fear stems from a lack of something. There are a multitude of factors that make up why a person feels fear. My message to you today isn't about getting you to stop fearing. I actually want you to fear every situation you come across. This message isn't about getting you to stop. I want you to embrace fear. This message is about getting you to understand that fear is one of the most powerful tools you have. Second Timothy 1.7 states, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. God did not give us the spirit of fear, which means the spirit of fear is a trick of the devil. God specifically says he's given us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. In addition, he told us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. By giving you the spirits of power, of love, of sound mind, God has given you the tools and the authority to face everything and rise. Face everything and rise. Because of God's gifts of spirit, of power, of love and sound mind, you innately have always had the tools and the authority to face everything and rise. You've had the tools to overcome adversities and face everything and rise. You've had the tools to embrace everything and face everything and rise. Your authority to face everything and rise is the most powerful tool God put in your toolbox when he knitted you in your mother's womb. Use it. Use it. So no longer 
do you have the excuse of being held back by the devil's spirit of fear? No longer do you have the excuse of being held back by the devil's spirit of fear because God has given you the spirit of power which allows you to operate in the authority he has given you to fear, face everything, and rise. God has given you the spirit of love, which allows you to operate in the authority he has given you to fear, face everything, and rise. God has given you the spirit of a sound mind to operate in the authority he has given you to fear, face everything, and rise. God has given you the authority through power, through love, through a sound mind to operate in fear, face everything, and rise. In the kingdom of God, fear is not a spirit. Fear is your God-given authority to do, face everything, and rise. Trials and tribulations are the refining processes that all precious materials endure. Isaiah 43.4, because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I will give people in exchange for you and nations instead of your life. Empowered women walk and operate in the God-given authority to face everything and rise. For his anger lasts only a minute, but his favor, a lifetime. Weeping may stay overnight, but there is joy in the morning. For he knows the plans he has for you. Plans for your well-being, not for a disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Face everything and rise. You've been given the authority to face everything and rise. I am Ida Johnson Myers. I honor you. I thank you. God loves you. Face everything and rise. Please visit my website, whensherise.com, and follow me on social media. When she rise, the number one. When she rise, one. I thank you. I honor you. Bye-bye.